Hello, good day to you. One time, there were two teachers who were given a question, and the question goes like this. Why are you teaching? Why do you keep doing what you are doing? The first teacher responded and said, Ah, I'm a teacher because many in my families were teachers, and teaching is a good job, it's a noble profession, and that is why I teach. The second teacher responded to the same question and said, Ah, I'm teaching because I want to make a difference in the lives of the new generation. I want to help change the Philippines. It's the same job, two teachers with the same teaching career, but two different responses. Sometimes the key to excellent work, the key to success in life, and whatever we do in our life, in our career, is actually our perspective, how we value our work, and how we see our work makes a difference on how brilliant or how effective or how excellent we contribute in whatever we do. It's not how much we know, it's not how much we have, it's not even what we do. It's about what we see about what we do. It's about our perspective in life. And so the way we value our work, the way we see our work, spells the difference between Someone who honors God with his work or someone who just drags himself going to work. Today we'll be talking about work and worship. How do we create a career that honors Christ? Today I want us to look at some principles on how we can gain a better perspective about work and how we can honor God through our work. Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 to 24 says, Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart, as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. Remember that the Lord will give you as a reward what He has kept for His people. For Christ is the real master you serve. Work is a huge part of our lives. Whether you are a workforce in a factory, or you are managing many employees in a company, or you are teaching a class, or you are a mother taking care of a home. Work is a huge part of our lives. And so how we see work, how we value work, and what perspectives we have about our work depends highly on how we see it based on what God says. So when we see our work as our worship to God, people may worship our God when they see our work. There are at least three reflections we can gain from the Colossians 3 passage we just read. And this is the first. The quality of your work shows what your inner passion is. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. This means that whether you're sweeping the streets or driving a grab car or building a house or running an office or feeding the chicken or guarding a bank or selling gadgets, whatever it is you do, your job is not just a job. To work with all our hearts means whatever we do, we do it with all our enthusiasm, with all our passion, with all our excellence, with all our love, and with all our energy. Because the Bible says that we were placed here on earth to make our work, to make our life a worship to God and a ministry to others. The problem sometimes is we have this misconception about work. We see work as a burden instead of a blessing. We see work as a curse instead of a calling. And that leads us to see that work is not worship. It's not spiritual. It's not something that we do as a service or as a ministry. But the truth is, work is not cursed. Work is good. Work is the idea of God. Work comes from God as a gift to humanity. In the beginning of creation, Work was given as something that is good and beautiful and excellent. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The truth is, work was created by God even before sin entered creation. Adam and Eve was given work in the Garden of Eden. They were in paradise and God gave them work. So God saw everything they did, everything He did in creation, as good. And God saw all that He had made, and it was very good. After the first human beings fell into sin, 
our view of work became distorted. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and now we have this cycle of sin that we have been fighting against until today. One of the many outcomes of this is the way in which we tend to view work. Originally, work was supposed to be an expression of joy and delight and worship to our Creator. Today, because of sin, we tend to either idolize work or reject work. Work never stopped being good. It just became harder this time because of sin. Work is still good because it comes from the very character of God. It is part of God's plan. It is part of God's creation. That's why work is good. Knowing that work is good and it was created by God is an eye-opener for many people. Because for some cultures, work is described as a necessary evil. And so it becomes a burden, either a punishment or just a something that we need to do. Work is actually good for us. Notice when people retire or when people are fired or people stop working, in a sense their lives become empty and meaningless and purposeless and aimless. It's like something in their humanity is missing if they stopped working. So work does something good in our humanity. It gives us pleasure, it gives us delight, it gives us dignity, it gives us meaning and purpose in life. So that is how we love our work. We see it as something good. We see it as a blessing from God. We see work as a gift of God to our humanity. Something in our humanity is incomplete if work is missing. That is why the first glimpse God gives us of himself in the Bible is that he is working. He was a creator and he was a worker. In the beginning, God was working and creating and shaping the world. What God did in creation was staggering, but he did not stop working after that. He is still working until this very moment. He is still creating, sustaining, providing, blessing, healing, loving, giving, rescuing, and redeeming creation. So, it is important that we know and remember that our God is a creator, our God is a worker, and He says that work is good. This is very important on the way we view our work. Work is good. It's good for us. So, how do you see your work today? Do you see it as a burden or do you see it as a blessing? Do you see your work as a curse or do you see it as a calling? Do you see your work as a punishment from God? Or do you see work as good? Something that is beautiful and excellent. A gift from God. Remember, when we see our work as a worship to God, people may worship our God when they see our work. The second reflection we can get from this Colossians chapter 3 passage is this. The quality of your work signifies who your real boss is. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. In your work today, you may have a great boss or you may have a terrible boss, but either way, your ultimate real boss is the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why the Bible says, when you work, you work as if you do it for the Lord. Because God is ultimately our boss, our master, and our Lord. This will change our attitude about our work. Because when we see that our work is something we do for God, we make it our worship. We make it our ministry. When you realize that you're actually serving God and not just some human being who is over you, it will radically change the way you see work. Now we can see our work as our worship, as our service, and as our offering, our gift to God. So why do we work with all our heart? Because we are working as if we are doing it for the Lord and not for people. That is why no matter what we do, whether you are preparing a meal or you're preparing a lesson plan or you are signing an invoice or you're closing a deal or you're making a delivery, Whatever it is, we can do it with excellence and with love and with joy, with passion, because it is the Lord we are serving, not people. That's why our work can be our form of worship to God and our form of ministry as well. Somebody once said, you can milk cows for the glory of God. You can clean toilets for the glory of God. 
It's our attitude that counts. Because we say, God, I'm doing this for you, not for people. How will this truth change the way you see your work? How will it change the way you work? You see, if you do your work because you love Jesus, it will change your attitude. It will change your behavior. It will change the quality of your work. So for instance, if you're working in a hotel and you are preparing the bed, so you're thinking, what if Jesus is the one sleeping on this bed? I'm doing it for the Lord. And so you'll make the bed proper and clean and excellent. Or you're cleaning the toilet. What if Jesus is the one using this toilet? Or you're preparing a meal. What if Jesus is the one who will eat the one the, the meal I'm cooking? You will do it with love. You will do it with passion, with excellence, with enthusiasm. Because this is you're doing this for God and not for people. If you're doing your work because of your love for Jesus, it will change the way you work. Worship and work should not be two separate things. We work when we worship, and we worship when we work. The ancient Hebrews have a deep and profound understanding of this. There is no separation between faith and work. The word for worship and the word for work is the same. It's avodah. Can you imagine? It's the same word they used for plowing the fields or cleaning the toilets or preparing a meal or teaching a class. It's the same word that is used for worship. Work and worship, they're the same. This tells us that God's original design and desire is that our work and our worship will lead us to a harmonious way of living our lives. This means that we are also called to be the people of God in whatever we do, in whatever employment or career or vocation or work. We need to shine our brightest lights even when people around us are hopeless and negative and discouraged and cynical and angry and negative all the time. We can instead see work as something that is beautiful and excellent, a form of worship and a form of ministry to our God. This means that when people see us, they see love and joy and peace and fulfillment and excellence in our work. And they can be attracted to our Father because of the lives we live and the relationships we have and the way we love and the way we work becomes a magnet for the gospel. They will see that we are the people of God on the way we live and the way we work. Can you imagine when Christians work as if they're doing it for the Lord and not for people? Companies will prefer to hire Christians over non-believers. Businesses will prefer to work with Christian businessmen and women instead of non-believers. Why? Because we have a different view of our work. We see it as our form of worship to God. In Matthew chapter 5, 15 to 16, Jesus said, Let your light shine. So that people will see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Isn't it beautiful when we integrate our faith into our everyday life, into our everyday work, in our everyday relationships? When our faith speaks volumes about our God and our work points to who our God is. When we see our work as our worship to God, people may worship our God when they see our work. The third reflection we have today for the Colossians 3 passage is this. The quality of your work suggests where your mission field is. Colossians 3, 23 to 24 says, Whatever you do, Christ is the real master you serve. Because Christ is our master, this means that our work is not only our ministry, our work is also our mission field. It's like we represent Christ to our work area and we represent the gospel as well. So, in our offices, in our companies, in our businesses, in our schools, in our field, in our places of work, we become ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We become ministers of reconciliation. We become missionaries of the gospel. We become the bearers of grace. We become the spokespersons of Jesus Christ. That means we are missionaries and pastors and we are witnesses for God in whatever workplace we are. In the history of the church, there have been distinctions between glorified positions or work and the lesser positions of work as well. Sadly, there was a time in history 
when monks, priests, bishops, pastors, missionaries, Bible teachers, evangelists were considered as spiritual in their work, a higher call as it were, because they do spiritual activities like, like teaching the Bible, evangelizing the lost, and doing church work, while everyone else who does unspiritual work were considered secular or worldly in their vocation. We need to reject the idea that Christians who went to monasteries or seminaries are more spiritual compared to other Christians who are teachers, carpenters, farmers, business people. Why? Because all Christians are supposed to be ministers for Christ. All Christians are missionaries for the gospel and full-time workers for Jesus Christ. There is no such thing as sacred work or secular work because we all do it for God and for God's glory and for the advancement of God's kingdom. So whether you are a pastor or a teacher or whether you are a business person or a missionary, all of us are working for God. There is no such thing as a first-class Christian citizen or a second-class Christian citizen. There is no such thing as a higher calling or a lower calling. All of us are given by God with different gifts and different abilities and different talents that we can use for the kingdom of God and for the glory of God. In other words, the biblical perspective teaches us that there is no such thing as secular work. All work is sacred work because we're doing it for God. That is why whatever career you have, whatever vocation you are in, whatever workplace you are doing, you're doing it for God, you are a missionary. You're advancing the kingdom of God and you are representing Christ to people you work with. You are a minister of the gospel as well. Your work is a mission field. Your work is your ministry. Your work is your act of worship to God. When we see our work as our worship to God, people may worship our God when they see our work. Imagine the impact we will all make when we see our work as a mission field, when we do it out of a heart full of love, and when we do it for Jesus. And that is how we pursue an excellent life. That is how we succeed in our lives. It's not in what we do. It's not in how much we have. It's not in what we know. It's not in how good we are. But it's because of how we put value to our work. Is it adding to the glory of God? Is it contributing to the kingdom of God? Remember, the quality of your work shows what your inner passion is. The quality of your work signifies who your real boss is. The quality of your work suggests where your mission field is. Remember the story of the taxi driver who is a Christian? One day, a passenger left his bag filled with millions of pesos in his taxi cab. So the taxi driver who is a Christian looked for an address and some contact details inside the bag, called the person and gave all the money back with the bag. This taxi driver is very poor. He lives in a poor village. That is why when the neighbors heard what happened, they were all laughing at him and made fun of him and told him that he was so foolish for returning the money. His wife even wanted to separate from him and annul their marriage. The people in his family and his community were so angry at him for doing what he did. But even when people were angry at him for his honesty, he simply said, My work is my worship to God. My work is my ministry for people. I want to live with integrity. I want my work to be honoring to the Lord. Wow! What an amazing response, yeah? Imagine when all of us see our work as something that brings honor to the Lord. What difference will it make in our attitude, in our behavior, and in the quality of our work? So, whatever kind of work it is you're doing, whether you're sweeping the streets or cleaning the toilet or guarding a bank 
or selling some gadgets or teaching a class or running a business, whatever it is, your job is not just a job. Your work is your worship to God and your work is your ministry for people. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today that you remind us that our work is our worship, that we can build a career that honors Jesus Christ. Father, help us in whatever it is we're doing. Help us to honor you with our lives. Help us to worship you with our work. And help us to love you with all our hearts. Father, bless each one of us. For those who are burned out and exhausted and tired and weary and about to give up, I pray that you give them strength. For those who are bothered and discouraged, for those who are going through tough times, I pray that you give them peace and joy and strength. I pray, Father, that you will embrace us. And help us, Lord, to do excellent work for your glory. Help us, Father, to find joy and fulfillment in whatever it is we're doing. Because you are the one who began a good work in us and you will finish the work you began. You are the good and excellent worker. Help us to be like you. We love you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen.